Hi everybody, so final thoughts time for Creature Comforts. And this game has got to be one of the cutest, coziest games in our collection. It's my absolute favorite theme. I love cozy games and like it's the, the it's just the best. Like decking out your home to have the absolute comfiest and coziest winter. I mean, yeah. come on. So if you didn't watch the run through, you don't know what this game is all about. You are little woodland creatures mm -hmm. and you are trying to create the comfiest uh, coziest home. You're going to deck it out with all furniture, uh, warm attire. You're going to be making things like pie and stew mm. and all of those wintry delicious foods and outdoor winter things <laughs> that I don't know about because I'm not really a winter kind of person. I'm going to be indoors, not doing <laughs> outdoor things. Uh, but it's actually a competitive game where you are trying to make the coziest home for winter. Yeah. And the way that we're going to be getting things done in this game is through a really interesting use of dice worker placement. Because in this game, you are only aware of what two out of a pool of six dice yeah. are going to be at the time where you're placing your workers out into the spots mm. and each of the worker placement spots is activated by a different value die or combination of dice and that means that there's actually a really interesting push your luck dynamic in this game. Yeah, because you're essentially all these different locations where you can get all these, uh, these resources they all have different requirements of the type of die that will allow that worker that you're preemptively hoping, you know, I'm going to place them there, reserve, you know, that spot for me to be able to kind of go in there later. But you may not get the dice because the only dice yeah. that you know are the two dice that belong to you that you roll first. And then after you've committed all your workers, that's when we roll the other four the communal, communal dice. Yes, dice. And so you, if maybe you need to have um, two even numbered dice in order to activate mm. the spot and you know you've got one, but what's the likelihood of another even dice being rolled in the other four communal dice? Well, probably pretty high. Maybe I'll take that gamble. But sometimes it's really risky because mm. you end up going into a few different spots that have different requirements. And now you need the perfect set of dice in order to make yeah. all of your dreams come true. So it's a really interesting twist on dice worker placement yeah. that I haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, and I, I quite enjoy it because there's a little bit of certainty, but then there is, of course, some luck. But yeah. there are opportunities to mitigate. Yeah, I like that, that you luck. never come home completely empty handed because if you happen to have one of those workers that didn't end up uh, being able to get the dice combination that you needed, then you get to learn a lesson. So they learn a valuable lesson, which is this little token that then in subsequent turns you uh, get to use to increase or decrease the value of your die by one per token that you spend. Yeah, so, so again, you can kind of like you yeah. get something good out of a bad situation yeah. that the dice weren't rolled in your favor. Yeah. Um, but I also really like the fact that um, you are collecting resources from all different parts of the board and those same resources are going to contribute to two different types of things that you're trying to get done in this game and they both give you victory points mm -hmm. but one is building out the range of comforts mm -hmm. and these comfort cards all have different resources that are required and these are the things that are going to deck out your home mm -hmm. but what I really like is that they have uh, some I guess paired combos. synergies yeah, with other cards. Synergies with yeah. the other cards. So for example, if I was able to pay four mushrooms and get this stew, well, this stew will give me five victory points, but two bonus victory points is if I'm also able to get the bread. Of course. The bread to go with the stew. I mean how much better? Much better. It's yes. going to be if I have bread in Much my winter. Better. And the bread... <laughs> dip into my stew. The yeah. bread itself gives me four victory points. But if I have a soup, then I get an extra two victory points. And so it gives you this sense of... Um, an objective to work towards. Mm. And so you're trying to look through the market, look through the deck as much as possible to try and find the cards that have this synergistic effect mm. that are going to help you uh, combo out more victory points. And then also there's some of the cards, so this this stew and bread example, they have like a suit and this belongs to um, a food. Yeah. And then there's, there's also others that are clothing. like clothing or outdoor. And it's, so there's also kind of other ways of... Now, other cards, 
yeah, yeah. comboing things for, and for other points as there's well. There's some scoring cards that will give you an extra victory point for everybody's food cards on the table yeah, or everybody's clothing yeah. on, the, on the table. And so everybody's clothing on the table sounded weird. It's not well, that type of game. No, like I think um, one <laughs> of them is like the, what do you call it, where you make clothing, the something uh, loom, I can't, the I don't spinning know. spinning wheel? That's it, the spinning, yeah. wheel. spinning wheel. And so that one is like everyone else who has clothing, um, yeah, like for every clothing that, that owned by other places because you probably you made it probably so, so you're like, getting extra points yeah, yeah. There, there is I, that's what I also love about it like there's there's really nice thematic linking between yes. all these elements it's not just like random icons and that's it so for example there's one I think from memory it's not here but it's a um, like a desk a writing desk and then you actually get um, you get points for everyone else that has uh, lighting so one of the other is like so if they end up having candle or, or things that they can uh, light that they can read by they're going to be able to read your book yeah. <laughs> and so like there's That's always nice. these cute like yeah, yeah. linking and things. also the resources that you need to build certain things they do make quite good thematic sense so in order to um, make the bread you need to have wheat mm-hmm. and so that makes sense and then wheat only grows at certain times of the year so um, during subsequent seasons they might be more abundant so you've yeah. got to plan a little bit because the, um, that's another element I really like about this game is that the worker placement spots are changing season yeah. by season. These cards, every round, be- represents a different month and they're always going to be changing. So you're going to have <laughs> uh, spring, summer, fall, and each one of those will have yeah, different, different elements resources. available. Yeah. yeah, so that's another cool And thing. so I haven't spoken about the second way that you use resources, and that's to create these improvements. Mm. And the improvements are going to give you ongoing benefits or end game scoring conditions. And those are just fun and mix up the game a little bit. And you feel really powerful when you have one of those. So I really like that um, about the game. And even create, so some of them um, actually create additional spots on the board that then, you know, you own them. When you build improvements, you put your little cottage uh, on top of them, and you ha- you're limited to only four improvements that you can build in the game. So mm-hmm. that's another little bit of attention of like, oh, do I want to? spend my you know my cottage on this one but then when you build it this will actually ongoingly whenever anyone else uses that spot you're going to get another benefit mm-hmm. so yeah it's like you're contributing to the uh, yeah. the economy of of the board and that's why maggie loves this game so much is because the it, the theme is so cute and yeah. also the theme is so integrated uh with what you're collecting and what you're doing and it feels very cozy and very nice and you see your home come together and that's a really nice feeling um, um, in terms of uh, elements of it that we like a little bit less, I will have to point out one element about this game, um, which is the the fact that when we're p- placing out our workers in the form of our meeples mm-hmm. before we know what the communal dice are, it's done simultaneously. And yeah. that's great because everybody is just putting all of their workers down and it doesn't bog down the game. But then... When we actually start to use those communal dice to activate our workers, it's person by person, Mm, player by player. And as soon as you get more than, you know, three players, even at three players in this game, but as you get to four players, it really, really starts to have a lot of downtime while you're waiting for the other person to activate all of their workers. Mm. Because that can take a little while because they're thinking what's the most optimal order for me to do that. And then I want to exchange this for that. And then I'm going to go and buy this. Mm. And now I'm going to go and do that. And you're just sitting there waiting for them to wrap up their (laughs) turn. And in this game, often I find myself going to, to go check on dinner while Maggie it can is playing run a bit her long. turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can run a bit long. Particularly it because run. it's a game that's still, it's fairly, uh, it's a fairly gateway sort of level game. Like you can use this as an introduction to the concepts of worker placement or dice worker placement as well. And and that, so, but the length I think then makes it a bit limiting because not everyone who's new to board game is going to be happy to sit down for an hour plus. I, I think the downtime is a problem mm. for keeping younger people engaged mm-hmm. with this game. That's what I would probably say say that I feel like it is an entry level game but it's not necessarily a children's game because I Mm. feel like there are a lot of complexities in what you're doing in the game that it's not you know it does actually take a little bit of like mental load to think about the order that you're going to do things and like what you're saving up for so it's I would say it's probably more of an adult game but maybe more of an intro 
mid-weight gamers game yeah. um, rather than a, a very heavy game. And of yeah. course it has the cute theme, but I think the cute theme could trick you into thinking that it's, that it's not lighter, thinky. Yeah, even, that it's much that lighter it is, than yeah, what yeah. it is. There is the flexibility in that. It does go quite long, even though they give you the option of the full game is eight rounds and, and sort of including all of those, those uh, these sort of valley cards. But then you can make it shorter, six rounds, and it's still quite long. I mm. feel like you could still even pull out some of those cards and kind of house rule it to make it, you know, even Yeah, shorter. so we were playing in the run through the short variant, and every, every time we've played this game, it's been the short variant. The short variant should be the standard variant in most people's opinion, I believe. Um, I... And then the long one should be just if you just love being in this world yes. and you just want to continuously extend the game. So I'll play the long variant, the long variant. particularly <laughs> when I'm playing solo because yeah. I just want to be able to like get as much time as I can to optimize my strategy. And the solo version of this is really, really straightforward because you don't have to change anything about it. You just play the game the exact same way and you're just trying to get a better score so a better score every time so highly highly recommend this as a cute cozy solo experience as well and, and ultimately no downtime. <laughs> and <laughs> ultimately that's what this is it is a cozy game mm. that is really endearing yeah. and if you you and your friends just want to or even you and your partner it's quite good at two players good at solo it's good at two players but it's fine with the group as long as you know nobody minds the um, downtime or everyone's just engaged in what that player is doing on their turn and yeah. you're all there for more of a relaxing yes. experience yeah. um, but it does have some really interesting unique twists on that dice worker placement mechanic yeah. um, as well as uh, you know an evolving board and mm -hmm. little goals that you can set yourself yeah. and it so it does feel like there's momentum in the game and I really enjoy that about yeah, it yeah I, I agree yeah but we hope you enjoyed the run through and that it showed you how this game plays we hope you liked this video if you did please like and subscribe to Rado's channel if you haven't already and we'll be back with more board game content soon but otherwise bye for now bye